Do you eat beef and love the cattle industry? Well, boy, do I have an episode for you today. We're going to talk with Tyler Schuster, who is the manager of leadership development for Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. Tyler and I have both been selected to be part of the 2024 class of Cowgirl Magazine's 30 Under 30. And our episode today with Tyler kicks off our series talking with some of the amazing honorees that are part of this crew. I can't wait for this conversation. And as you know, in this podcast, we go beyond the saddle as we explore professional careers across the equine industry. I'm your host, Katie Kleinbell. Let's tack up and head out. Welcome back to Beyond the Saddle, everyone. I've got an exciting friend here today that's going to kick off a brand new series on Beyond the Saddle. We are going to be interviewing the 2024 class of Cowgirl Magazine's 30 Under 30. I am so honored to be part of that group, and there are so many amazing women with fabulous careers, so much gumption, and just great stories to tell. And I have one of them with me here today to kick us off, and that is Tyler Schuster. So Tyler, I'm going to give you the floor. Please welcome to the podcast and tell us what you do. Let's talk about your career, and let's dive in. Yeah, well, first off, thank you so much for having me as a fellow podcaster. It's always fun to be on the other side of a podcast and as the guest. And so I'm excited to join you and really looking forward to, like Katie mentioned, we were both recognized as Cowgirl Magazine 30 Under 30 and with a phenomenal group of women, um, people who really at such a young age have made huge strides in the Western agriculture industries. But I grew up on a ranch. I'm from South Texas and my family ranches and I grew up doing all the things. So stock showed, rodeoed, uh, ranched and found a huge love for horses early on. And to this day, my favorite place to be is on horseback watching the sunrise. And my mom will often tell people as a kid, she sent us with a pop tart and a Dr. Pepper and let us go. And we, you know, knew where we were supposed to be and when we were supposed to have the goats we were gathering and when we were supposed to be there and that was before cell phones. And I just think, wow, my mom was really crazy. Um, she just sent us out there <laughs> into the world uh, on the ranch and had no way of communicating with us and just knew we would show back up where we we're supposed to be when we were supposed to be there. But from there, I went to Tarleton, which if you're familiar with college rodeo is kind of the university and we have the best rodeo team in the nation. And so I was surrounded by cowboys and cowgirls and got a degree in agricultural services and development. And the Lord just really blessed me at Tarleton. I got to do a lot of really neat things and didn't really know what I wanted to do, thought I wanted to do another degree. So I ended up going to A&M and I got a master's in public service and administration. It has nothing to do with agriculture. And I always say what it really taught me was that I wanted to stay in agriculture. Uh, People outside our industry just weren't home for me and I wanted to be around people like-minded and who carried the same values I had and so between my first and second year of grad school I had to do an internship and TSCRA which is Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association posted that they were starting their internship program back up so I applied I was selected and they haven't been able to get rid of me And I haven't been able to get rid of them yet. And so I worked here as an intern, moved into a remote position for nine months while I finished my master's. And then as soon as I graduated from A&M, I moved to Fort Worth and have been here full time for about a year and a half. I am currently the manager of leadership development. And so I oversee and coordinate all programming for people under the age of 40. And so really looking at the next generation of cattle raisers and seeing how we can support them, whether it's through networking events, education, webinars, or just resources. And so it's fun. It keeps me busy. I I like to stay on the road. And when I'm not in the office or on the road for work, I'm typically on the ranch. And when I'm not doing either of those things, I host a podcast called Basically Famous. And I connect with women in Western and agriculture industries to just highlight and showcase their stories. 
so many good things in there that I want to unpack. Oh my God. First of all, we were just joking before, like I turned her loose before we got on the call here. I'm just like, Tyler's always gone, like following her on social media. She's doing so many fun things all the time. Like I can't even express to you. You guys should really go follow her and just like, I feel like I'm like your roadie. I'm like on the road with you. Tyler. <laughs> That's funny. I actually got a text today from the guy I interned with when I was an intern here. And he was like, as an avid Instagram story follower, it looks like you're at home this week. And I was like, I am. But yes, I um, am kind of blow and go. I am not married. I don't have a dog and it's just me. And so I never pass up an opportunity when one presents itself. And I've just decided I'm going to sleep when I'm dead. So I stay <laughs> on the go. And I'm also an avid poster. I show and showcase a lot of my life on the internet um, because so I think people enjoy it and I enjoy sharing it. So why not do it? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. It's so much fun to just like, yeah, see behind the scenes and like travel with you. So please don't stop. I love it. <laughs> Even if it's just for me, it's super fun. <laughs> There's so much I want to talk about here. And I, 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 I want to loop back to horses because we all love horses here. Uh, but first I want to start with, um, getting like going to Texas A&M, um, getting that degree in public service and administration. And I love what you said about like, it taught you that you knew you wanted to be in agriculture, but I also feel like I want to just applaud you, like commend you for like stepping into that zone and doing something that is a little bit outside of your normal world. Because I think the whole industry is better for that. Like when we do that and we're able to like go and explore and, you know, venture into those different spheres in the pro professional space and the collegiate space, and then bring back what you learned to agriculture, it just makes us all stronger. Like, can you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Well, I have political aspirations. I've always been intrigued with ag policy. And when I was at Tarleton, I had a professor and he was like, you should really look into an MPA, which is public administration. And I was like, okay, so I did. And God just really opened doors. At the time, I was good friends with the chancellor at Texas A&M, Chancellor Sharp. And he was like, look, like I can guarantee you a job, just apply. And every student who gets accepted to the Bush School gets some kind of scholarship, could be a third, could be your full tuition, it just depends. And so I knew that this would be my one way to obtain a degree, not have to pay for it all out of pocket. And so I applied and I remember they do a whole interview weekend. And the first night I called my mom crying and I was like, this is not for me. Like, this is terrible. Why did I even think I could go here? And my mom was like, Tyler, they're just trying to scare you. Like they're sorting out the week. Like you're better than this. Come on. And I was like, whatever, Donna, you know, <laughs> like whatever you say, mom. <laughs> and so, um, but I didn't have a plan B. And so I got in, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go. And um, it was the hardest thing I've done yet. I won't say in my life because I hope I have a lot of life left to live, mm -hmm. but it really challenged me to think in a different aspect. It was a ton of reading and writing, and I love to read. I hate to write. Give me a microphone any day of the week before I have to type up something, <laughs> and so I just like bear down and got through it. My I lived with my sister at the time, and I attribute a lot of like just surviving during that period of my life to her and our other roommate because like my sister could tell me like, you need to walk away. Like you need to get up and walk away from your desk right now. Or like, why don't we go do something fun? But it also led me to having all these conversations with people who didn't have the same beliefs as me. So there's about a hundred people in my class and I was one of two who had agriculture background. Um, and wow. so I sat at tables with people who had never been on ranches. They didn't know what we did. I, as you know, since you follow me, I wear and promote Eat Beef a ton. So whether it's on my t-shirts, my sweaters, the stickers on my laptop, um, everything is kind of cattle focused or ag focused. And it brought up a lot of interesting conversations because I went to school with a ton of people who were vegan or vegetarian. Mm. And so then we got to talk about how they formed that belief and why I thought, you know, beef was a great source of protein. And so it just led me to really kind of seeing the world from a consumer's perspective. I had always been in agriculture. I lived in a rural community growing up. I went to Tarleton. It's very ag oriented. I studied ag. 
everyone was basically a producer. Like they yeah. got it. I wasn't having to share why they should want to be involved or eat, you know, even if it's not beef, it's pork or chicken or whatever it is, why they should consume those products. And so the Bush school was the first time I'd really had to like, I wouldn't say make my case, but I, I was just, my eyes were open to how the world perceived animal agriculture. And like I said, I really just bared down and got through it. Something I don't talk about very often, but that I'm very proud of is that even though it was super challenging as a 48 hour master's program, I only made one B, I made the rest of it. Rest of my classes were A's. And so just- Yeah, girl, learn, that's huge. Learning to be a student, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I bought a textbook in undergrad and in grad school, you know, you're reading 400 pages a week. And so sure. just the adjustment of it and like you could do hard things. And I think if you set your mind to it and it's what God has called you to, like you're going to make it through. And grad school taught me that. Oh my gosh. There's so much there. Just the challenge alone, it says a lot about your character, but it also says a lot about our industry too. And I think there's a good nugget there to kind of take away of, you know, we do sort of get comfortable whether you're in the ag space or like even in the smaller like equine space, right? Like we're surrounded so often by our peers, which are wonderful, delightful, amazing human beings. And I, you know, we, we feel at home here, but it is so good for all of us to like step outside of our comfort zone and have to like, quote unquote, defend your convictions, right? and help paint the picture of your lifestyle and you know why this speaks to your soul and you know why why it is what it is for our country and our planet and our belief system etc so i really applaud you for having to had like walk through that that hard time because i think you're better for it i think we're all better for it well and i always say i mean it took me getting away to realize what i had like you said like we've just surround ourselves with the same people who do the same thing and we kind of take for granted the awesome opportunity we have. And when you're away from it, you really step back and you're like, wow, this was here all along and I didn't realize it. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. Okay. The next piece of your journey I want to dive into because it's something I'm also very passionate about is internships because you said that you joined uh, the TSCRA internship program and they haven't been able to get rid of you yet, which is exactly the way internships are supposed to work when you find, you know, you use them to find your fit and you found your fit. Like how perfect is that? It's been a lot of fun. I'm actually now the intern coordinator. And so I oversee four interns a semester and 20 interns for our convention. And so I always tell people, like, I, I really love the under 40 crowd. Just that's my group. I'm all for the next generation. As someone who hopes to take over a ranch one day, just, you know, figuring out what it's going to take to walk alongside my mom and do that. But if I had to pick like one age group that it just, my, I feel so called to, it's college kids. There's just something about helping someone realize like what they want to do or what they're passionate about or why they do what they do. And so, yeah, I started here as an intern and our internship is really unique. We're a small organization, but we have 28,000 members. And so we do everything from events, education, to membership, to communication. And so my interns and when I was an intern, it was the same way. It was like, what do you want to do? Okay, here's task in that realm. Go for it. And they kind of just turned us loose. And they might have turned us a little too loose, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I think about like, one of the things, three of us used to go to the dry cleaners. Like it takes one person to go to the dry cleaners. <laughs> but we had so much fun. And it was really a safe space to learn and to ask questions. And I always hope wherever I'm at in life, people feel that way if they're interning or even just working with me. But I think internships, whether they're a good or bad experience, they showed you what you liked or what you didn't like. You could come intern with us and be like, hey, working for an association is not for me. Great, well, you took something away from it. Or totally. you could come work here and you could say, oh my gosh, I really love beef education. I could see myself doing that. Like, so great. Now I'm going to connect you with people who are in that industry and in that specific part of the industry, and I'm going to let you connect and, and meet them. And so I just, 
I, I think you should always say yes to an opportunity and you should never be closed off to one. And whether the internship is a semester long, a week long, or three days long, um, you know, while you're in college and you're, you're living broke, like, it's okay if they don't pay you as long as they'll house you and feed you, like, go do it is how I feel. Uh, now in the summer, that's a little harder if you're having to pay rent somewhere and move somewhere new. But like for our convention, we offer a week long internship. Um, and if you can just get yourself here, like I'm going to take care of you once you get here and you're going to get to meet the who's who in the industry because over 4,000 people are coming. And so it's just a way that you're going to figure out what you like, what you don't like, but really network. And, and I told you this, I love to network. And I think so many times we're told you need to network, but we're never really told how to network. And so I always try to use my position now to help people do that and connect them with people because when you first start it's awkward and it's hard to have conversation but if you don't ever try you're never going to build a skill set to where you feel like you're a great networker yes it's so true and for those of you who are like listening to this and going "Ugh, networking no ew you know like no i I don't want that makes me uncomfortable like lean into it because the sooner you start and just like accept that like it is going to feel uncomfortable and the more practice you have doing it the easier it's going to be for you you have no idea what doors it's going to open just being willing to have conversations with people and like tyler said just saying yes like if you have an opportunity to like try on a career even if it's for three days in a three-day internship opportunity or a three-day networking event or a three-hour networking event, what's it going to hurt? Like, go try. I think the value that comes from those things is so beyond measure. You know, a lot of people want those paid, those coveted paid internships, which are amazing, but frankly, they're kind of few and far between to find good quality ones. So if you know you're down this path of just exploring, meeting people, getting more comfortable in your skin, say yes. You know, that's what I would encourage y'all to do. I think Tyler's on that train. For sure. Well, and I think when you think of networking, everyone thinks of people in suits in this room and it's awkward and it's stuffy. And that's just not what networking looks like in our industry. Um, I think obviously there's in-person events and there's a way to network there, but I think a huge component of people's success nowadays is how they network online and, and utilizing online platforms. I'm a part of a group and a girl just posted like she really wanted to connect with people who had jobs in the industry. And I always try to comment on things like that and say, hey, I'm happy to chat, you know, shoot me a message. And so she called me and we had a 30 minute conversation about what I do. Um, and all that required of her was to pick up the phone and call me, you know, and I'm always willing and open to do that. And so don't be so closed minded and have this single set vision of what networking is that it stresses you out and it makes your hands get clammy because in the every day you're networking. I always say every day you're interviewing for the next day. And oh, so you never know who you'll meet and what it'll lead to. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I'm going to repeat that because it's so good. Every day you're networking for the next day, right? You're interviewing for your next day. I love that so much. And you're so right to look at it as your online community matters so much, right? And maybe it's more comfortable, right? Like maybe that's a more comfortable space for you to start in anyway, right? Maybe it's not LinkedIn, but maybe it is. Maybe it's just Instagram, right? Like maybe it's those Facebook groups. Maybe it's, you know, those people you've identified in the roles that maybe interest you or you have aspirations to kind of work towards those roles. Engage with them. I can't tell you how many times I have folks reach out to me on LinkedIn and they're just fascinated by the equine network and what I do. And they're just like, hey, can would you be open to just like jumping on, you know, a Zoom call with me for 15 minutes and letting me pick your brain? I do that pretty regularly as often as I can because I know how hard it is to get your arms around what it looks like. And it's such a great experience to just, you know, chat. Let's just talk. It is. And sometimes like this sounds bad, but like sometimes being a keyboard warrior is easier than in person. <laughs> and True. like when we think of keyboard warriors, we think of bullying, like don't be bullying people. But no, no. <laughs> I think it's super easy to just comment like congrats or, you know, if you shared an article and I read it, one of my takeaways from it, or if you were on a podcast and you shared it saying like, oh, I can't wait to listen to this. You know, that's mm -hmm. those are easy ways to connect with people and just build some conversation. And I always say I'm a poster, but when you're a poster, 
your name and your picture are continually coming up on someone's feed. And so you're constantly on their mind and they've been able to put a name with a face. Because so many times when we network in person, it's really hard to remember everybody's name. But if you go connect with them, LinkedIn is just what I reference because it's the professional site. But when you go back and you connect with them on that platform and then they see what you're doing, you know, then they're like, okay, I remember talking to her. Okay, I see what she's doing. I'm a little interested in that. Maybe we should go get coffee or I want to pick her brain for 15 minutes over Zoom, you know, and things just build based on that. Oh my gosh. So true. And then you're going to have them on your podcast and it's going to be full circle. Let's talk about your podcast. Basically mm-hmm. famous is the name of your podcast. What's like, give us like the, your elevator pitch. Cause uh, I'm, if people haven't tuned in, they need to, it's so much fun. Yes. So basically famous is a podcast where I sit down with women in the Western and agriculture industries and just share their stories. Um, there, there are a few guys who've made it on basically famous podcasts, but Um, I really try to just highlight women in our industry. I think it's cool to be a woman in ag and being able to talk to people who, like myself, you know, I ranch with my family, but I also have a full-time job and showcasing what that looks like because that's so common in our industry. And in the equine world, like how many people have a full-time job and they have horses and they rodeo or uh, show horses on the weekends as their hobby? You know, and so it's just fun to connect and share those stories. I started Basically Famous just because I love to talk. If if you haven't picked that up by this point, (laughs) Um, I'm a big talker. And I actually started it with my sister. It was like just fun. And we interviewed just like people in our life who are basically famous. And then I moved out and we just kind of, she was like, I'm good. And I was like, yep, I'm good without you too in a nice way and took over. And so I've been doing it by myself for over a year. And Um, I primarily just do women in ag, but I have over 60 episodes. Um, I launch episodes almost every Tuesday. I take a month off around Christmas time. And then I take June and July off just because I'm so busy in the summer. And it's so hot that (laughs) I like can't even think straight in Texas. So, (laughs) uh, but basically famous is just my passion project. It's for fun. It's what I enjoy doing and what I spend my free time doing. Oh my gosh. It's, it's so fun. And I, I love that there's just been a few men on there because it is cool to be a woman in agriculture. And I love that there are so many of us devoted to really raising each other up, telling each other stories, which is exactly why I was so excited to have you on beyond the saddle today, because there's so many amazing women in, in the industry in total. Um, but it's like this great snapshot that are here in the cowgirl magazine, 30 under 30 group. And Tyler, like you exemplify so many traits of why it is cool to be a woman in agriculture. You're confident, you're, but you're fun and you're out there and you're doing the thing. And I'm just so like honored to be as part of your sphere. And we, this is the second time actually that we've been in a group together. Um, Tyler and I were also selected to be part of, of the West next era of ag, um, with Jesse and Sarah. And that took place like last spring. Um, so our journeys have been it have crossed now in a couple of places. So it's so fun to have you here to tell your story and talk about all the cool stuff that you do. Well, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person for, for real, like we've only met virtually. Um, So I'm looking forward to meeting you in person in March. And it's just, I think it's so cool that I've, I've got a group of women in my life and I've got some men too, but you know, women who are really for building a longer table and not a taller fence and who we can cheer each other on and support each other and you know, when, when you see something you, that makes you think of me, you'd send it to me or I'd say, you know, like, and we're having conversation and we're presenting opportunities to each other. And there's so many times, you know, I see someone post a job and I'm like, that is not for me, but I know the perfect person for that. And I'm sending it to them. And I'm like, Hey, I know who's hiring. Like, let me put in a good word. And just, I mean, I think what I've been called to do is the coolest thing ever. And to get to do it alongside some amazing women like yourself makes it even better. 
Oh, it's such a good place to be. And it's so much fun to just be in this chapter of our lives of like saying yes and like, yeah, let's go for it. And we're going to have so much fun in Texas at the Cowgirl Empowered Gala. It's going to be great. Um, I want to kind of wrap it back up where we started. And that's with horses. Um, everybody who listens to this podcast in some way, shape or form is connected to the equine industry. And I know that um, that takes us down many different roads sometimes and really can lead us into agriculture like it has for you. Um, but you started out as that horse crazy girl growing up roadie wing and on the road with a pop tar on your horse. <laughs> I love that so much. So you must have horses on the ranch at home still. Yeah, we do. So, um, I feel like I knew how to ride a horse before I could walk. <laughs> um, and I just like, I don't remember my life without horses. We've always had them because we ranched and they were just in a huge part of our daily operation and what we did. And so, my mom grew up riding and rodeoed. And so when we, I mean, my brother did lead line. I don't know if I did lead line, but by the time I was five, we were rodeoing and we rodeoed <clears throat> kind of all over Texas. And I barrel raced, I roped, I tied goats, I did everything. And I, I rodeoed, we rodeoed really hard until I was about in seventh or eighth grade. And I really decided I liked playing basketball. And just that's what I wanted to do. And so I played basketball on a select team for a couple summers. And then um, there was just like a little local play day down the road from where we lived. And so in high school, I would just borrow people's horses. Like I rode, but my brother had horses still because my brother calf roped and team roped um, pretty seriously into high school and then kind of got burnt out and he's picked it back up. But um, I just borrowed, like I would ride his horses. And so I'd teach him how to run the barrels and I'd run barrels on them. And then I'd rope on them. And then, you know, I'd hop on someone else's horse to do another event. And so I've just always loved horses and been really immersed really in the rodeo aspect. Um, and since I've moved to Fort Worth, I've gotten more into the cutting and reining. I don't have any horses of my own right now, but um, I love that I'm kind of at the hub of everything equestrian here in Fort Worth. And there's always something you can go watch at Will Rogers. And so I don't know my life without horses to this day. Um, we do have horses and we do a little bit of work horseback. Um, I am thankful for, you know, ATVs and UTVs. We can utilize a Polaris now and do some things, but um, most of the time when I go home, I just for fun, at least one or two days will, bring in the horses and saddle one up and go out for a nice long ride. And just, there's something about being on the back of a horse and in what I like to call God's country. And it just makes me feel creative. It reminds me why I do what I do. And I think living in the city, sometimes it sucks the life out of you. And so I always know when I'm feeling kind of burnout or at ends meet that I've got to get home. I've got to get back to my roots and I've got to go get on a horse and I think my best ideas have come to me when I've been on the back of a horse always carry your phone or a notebook um <laughs> because I just there's just something about it that it's just like that's really when I have a big project at work or something I need to achieve like sometimes I, I'll be like hey like I, I've got to go home like I've got to I'm gonna take Friday off and I just need to get out of this office and these fluorescent lights and these four walls and and think about this. And I, and I always do my best thinking there. So that's, that's where you can find me when I'm stressed and I have a big project or, um, I'm needing to be inspired for the podcast or even fashion. I, I love Western fashion. And so, um, being around the rodeo world is always fun to be inspired by and, and what to wear and what people are wearing. I love that. There is so much creativity. I think it's like that release. I don't know, like when you have that connection with a horse and like just something about your soul and their soul and being outside where it's good for your soul <laughs> together, it's it's really kind of undescribable. But I think you did a good job of just really like pinpointing the things that like fulfill you and help you like drive your journey forward. And like being on the back of a horse, man, if you're feeling like overwhelmed or you just are stuck in a rut, I love that your go-to is to get on a horse and let your horse, you know, kind of guide you and, and be the way forward and inspire you in all the ways. There's just something magical about them. I don't know. It sounds so crazy, but when you're a crazy horse girl, we all get it. <laughs> well, and I mean, I just... Like I said, I don't remember my life without horses, 
But the other thing is like, I remember all the horses that had a big impact in my life. And even the ones who drove me crazy because it was terrible to get them down the alley. Or, you know, if we didn't hit a pole, we could win the pole bending. But if not, we were hitting all six in the trash can on the way out, you know, like, <laughs> but you just remember them all and the impact they had on your life. And looking back, I'm like, wow, I can't imagine what my parents invested for us to have the ability to do that and tr and travel the state and rodeo as hard as we did because it's a huge investment but it really made me who I am today and I think you know so many people often talked about this with livestock projects you know between my livestock projects and my horses like I really had to learn some responsibility and time management and I had to be disciplined and I had to care for something other than myself and so I feel like that really made me become the person I am and that people matter to me. Mm -hmm. And, and I learned that all through an animal. It is amazing. If we're willing to just take a moment and learn from them, I mean, the it's, it's limitless what they can teach us about ourselves and about each other and just how to be in this world, right? In this crazy, crazy world. And so much, even though our world is changing so much of what matters and what we need to like recenter ourselves on can be learned just owning and caring for horses or not even owning them, but just competing with them or being around them, you know, being part of that world because everybody there cares so much. Like you can't, you can't not, when you get around a horse, you can't not care. You got to be with them every minute. You know, they demand that of you and it's intoxicating in so many ways for sure. It fun. is. And it's just it's fun. And I, I, there's just something about it. It's it's so if you are familiar with Texas and m our saying is there's a spirit that can't be told. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can't I can't tell you what makes A&M so great, but I can tell you that when they are marching out of the tunnel to run out on the cow field, like I get goosebumps. Like it, it's just the spirit of Aguilian. And like that's how I feel about being in this industry. And like I can't exactly in words describe what livestock and horses have meant to me, but they've done so much for me as a person and, and building me to who I was meant to be. And now you're walking in that purpose and helping other people along yeah. their way and along their journey and find what they need to do, which is full circle. That's what it's all about. Oh my gosh. When you, like you said, you were in the thick of it there, like in Fort Worth, like in Texas, you've got, you're in the middle of so many amazing things and like so many different shows and opportunities. I have never been. So I am super excited to go in March and you're going to have to give me like the 10 cent tour. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I... I am overcommitted, if you cannot tell. And <laughs> I also volunteer at the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. And so I have, so we are, there are still six performances left. And I have been to 11 rodeo performances. <laughs> I have worked a couple of shifts as a volunteer greeting equine contestants. Anyway, I just love Fort Worth. And I love, like, Cowboy is cool here. And, and the stockyards and just the people and I, don't, I lived in Stephenville and it was fun because um, Stephenville is the cowboy capital of the world and if you are a pro rodeo athlete you either live in Stephenville or you frequent Stephenville mm -hmm. and so it's just was so fun like in college to I literally Haven Medjid won the world in 2019 and two weeks later we were partners for a class project and I remember <laughs> being like why did you come back to school like you're a world champion like you did not have to do that you know and so I was just surrounded <laughs> by people like that and then growing up rodeoing so many of my friends continued to do that and so I have Haley Kinzel's a great friend of mine and, and so getting to cheer her on and Jimmy Smith and people like that that I grew up with and now can cheer on and then you know, we either lived in Stephenville at the same time or they would come through and I'd get to see them. And so it's just things like that. And the horse world has just brought it all together. And like I said, in the beginning, it's just so fun and hard to describe. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so glad that you came on to like 
talk to us about your journey and inspire us along the way too. You had some amazing people in your world and you're just walking down this incredible path. So anybody who um, hasn't listened to her podcast, go check out Basically Famous. Go follow Tyler Schuster. Go get go follow her on Instagram and all the things because you can be like her little roadie and on the road with her. And you can catch us both as we head to Fort Worth um, for the Cowgirl Empowered Gala for Cowgirl Magazine's 30 Under 30 here in just a few weeks. And I just can't wait to meet you in person, Tyler. It's going to be so fun. I am so excited and I'm so thankful that you invited me to join you on the podcast and I can't wait to have you on Basically Famous. Yay, let's do it. (laughs) Thanks for riding along in this episode of Beyond the Saddle with Tyler Schuster. Stay tuned for more episodes with Wrangler Cowgirl 30 Under 30.